Our psalm, as I said, is Psalm 13. Please turn to that. We will read this responsibly, whole verse by whole verse. I'll say the uh, odd ones. You can respond with the even ones. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Together, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's say you're coming down with a cold. What are you going to do about it? Where do you go for relief? Well, you might go and get some throat lozenges, take care of that sore throat that you got, or you might take some cold pills so that you can sleep at night and breathe during the day. You might get one of those nasal, what do you call those things, you know, so that you can breathe as well. You do all that, and in a week to 10 days, the cold goes away. Let's say you've come down with something more serious than a cold. Fear, anxiety. You start thinking that everybody's out to get you. You can't put your finger on it, but you think that the spotlight is always on you, and everybody is watching, and everybody's waiting for you to do something stupid, and man, that feeling just doesn't feel good. But there's a lot of people that feel that way far too much of the time. Fear, anxiety. And unfortunately, it usually doesn't go away in 10 days. In cold medicine, it just isn't going to do the trick. If you've ever felt that way, the psalm that we read just a few moments ago, Psalm 13, is for you. What we have is a psalm here that encourages us to praise the Lord even when we are sick even when we are scared. The person who wrote this psalm by the power of the Holy Spirit was the mighty King David, and he wrote this psalm when he was down and when he was out, when he was feeling scared. He was really sick, and he was afraid that his enemies were watching and waiting, that they were going to take advantage of his sickness, and they were going to wrestle the kingdom away from him. What makes matters worse, he calls out to God, and God seems so quiet. He seems so distant. He seems so uncaring. He cries out, will you forget me forever? We've had those days. Far too many of us have days like that, like King David. And we're sick, and we're scared, and we're weak, and we think everyone's out to get us, and we cry to God for help, and, well, where is he? Why doesn't he help? Why doesn't he snap those almighty fingers of his and make everything better? How come we have to suffer and wait? And this psalm serves to bring us comfort when we're feeling this way and reminds us that we aren't the only ones who feel this way. We seem to get the idea that if our faith is strong enough and that if we put enough money in the offering and if we go to church enough and if we've memorized enough Bible passages, well, everything must be hunky-dory and it's supposed to be good. And when it isn't, we think there must be something wrong. They're suffering. Even the mighty King David felt this way at times. When we feel this way, it's good to know we're in good company. And this psalm serves to remind us that we can ask God whatever we want, whenever we want. He wants us to. He tells us in Scripture, pray to him, ask him for anything. But we need to realize there's no guarantees that God is going to do whatever we want, whenever we want. We may have to stick it out. We might have to wait. Don't get upset at this. He's God, you know. we got no business bossing him around. And finally, this psalm serves to remind us that when we are feeling this way, there are words of hope. 
These are words of hope that come right at the end of the psalm. In the midst of sickness and anxiety and fear and pain and suffering, there is love and salvation. There is God's love and our salvation. And maybe that's going to work out. That's how it's going to work out for us too. Got to wait till the end of the psalm in order to enjoy that. And maybe we got to wait through some bad stuff as well in order to see God's love and his salvation. You see, this psalm may not guarantee us physically healing, but with that word salvation, we are guaranteed something so much more important than even physical healing. We are guaranteed spiritual healing. With our Savior Jesus, we got forgiveness of sins. We have a place in heaven guaranteed. We have something simply wonderful to look forward to. And it looks like with the Lord's help, David was able to get over his sickness and his anxiety. With the Lord's help, we may get over our sickness and anxiety as well. Maybe. It depends. It's in the Lord's hands. But the beauty of this psalm and of our faith is that no matter what happens, we have our Lord and we have our faith and we have our sisters and brothers in Christ to look after us for support. There's pastors and friends we can pray with. There's counselors we can look to for understanding and help. And more than that, we have eternal life in heaven to look forward to. And because of that, we can praise the Lord even when we're sick, even when we're scared. Amen. And now by the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in with and through Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.